I'm never going to make a million dollars selling shoes on eBay, but I'm sure going to have a lot of fun. I'm Anthony, and I'm on a 1,000 week journey to upgrade life, my life, and hopefully the lives of others as well. The topic of this episode is on upgrading my game when it comes to selling shoes on eBay. There are six steps that I'm going to go over. The first one is sourcing shoes, followed by prepping the shoes for sale, photographing the shoes, number three, listing the shoes on eBay, number four, packaging the shoes, and then finally, number six is actually shipping the shoes. So let's start off with sourcing the shoes. And, and by the way, I'm not the world's greatest eBay seller. I come to you not as an expert, but as somebody who's only begun selling shoes on eBay since COVID hit last March. When it comes to buying shoes, shopping for shoes, I primarily go to thrift stores, mainly Goodwill here in the Fort Worth area where I live. The key thing for me is to make sure that I walk away with a shoe that's in quality shape, of which this is not. This is a mistake. I paid nine bucks for the shoe only to get back and realize that it peels away from the front. Completely my mistake. So, um, lesson learned. Uh, there's another shoe that I've got here that I purchased and it looked good. It uh, actually looked kind of cool. Didn't recognize the brand Grand Flex but something fell on this shoe while it was still in my inventory. And the leather, cheap leather, I don't know, probably fake plastic man-made materials, just cracked and chipped along there. So I'm glad that this happened when it was in my possession before a customer got it and, and then ended up returning it. When I first started sourcing shoes, I looked for shoes. Then I ended up narrowing that down to just men's shoes. Uh, before I had done hiking boots, uh, tennis shoes for women. Avoided the fashion stuff because I know nothing about that. But then I narrowed it down further to men's dress shoes, further quality men's dress shoes, then quality men's dress shoes that I thought would actually sell, which when it's uh, at more accurately represented looks closer to this. It's slim pickings out there. If you're going to go to the thrift stores and expect to have this huge cornucopia of wonderful high-end dress shoes, prepare to be disappointed because uh, there's not a whole lot out there. Uh, when I first started shopping, I would come back maybe 10, 15 pairs, but I was dipping into the Johnson & Murphy's that weren't the best at the time um, and, and other shoes, Cole Hans, for example. Now I'm really looking for Allen Edmonds vintage floor shimes if I can come across Alden, I'll certainly pick that up if they're in good shape. So higher quality men's shoes is how I have narrowed my market. And that means I'll probably end up purchasing more shoes on eBay. That's going to cost me more, probably up to 50 bucks for a given pair. But if they're ones that I feel will sell, especially when they're really redone, um, then that might be worth it for me. So the first step is simply shopping for the shoes, it, it's sourcing the shoes. The second one is prepping the shoes. And this one, I have done far more work in months past than I'm currently doing now. And the reason I have cut back is when it comes to eBay sales, I'm not sure it's worth my time to go through all of the steps to refinish a shoe, just surface level, of course, polishing and shining and cleaning and all that. Um, I just don't know that it's worth the effort. But in the past, and for some of my better pairs today, here are some of the steps that I will go through. Some of the shoes I will apply Renomat to, just to take off that top layer of built-up wax. I have had problems overusing acetone and ended up stripping the finish off of some cheaper, Allen, uh, cheaper Johnson & Murphy's and then trying my hand very poorly at re-dyeing those same shoes. That was an adventure, and they're still sitting in my inventory until I figure out what color I want to spray paint them with. Anyway, Rinomat, just to clear the, the old wax off, 
Conditioner, of course, using Renovateur or using Pure Polish's wonderful citrus smelling leather conditioner, followed by shoe cream. Again, Saphir or Pure Polish in a color that most appropriately matches the shoe, followed by shoe wax and again, Saphir or Pure Polish. The brush that I use to do my shoes is this Maximilian horsehair brush that I got off of Amazon for not a lot of money. So I'll put a link to that in the description to this video here on YouTube. Another product is the Cream Renovatrice, which is uh, used by me at least to touch up the colors on the edge of the soles. So I've got one in brown, I've got one in black. I think there are other uses for this, but that's uh, typically what I use them for. Occasionally, I'll put a mirror polish on a pair of shoes that's got a really nice cap toe. I don't spend a lot of time on this, maybe five minutes. I've learned to apply both the regular polish and sometimes the mirror polish wax uh, with my fingertips in layers of maybe 15 or so different layers and put it in the freezer and then buff that off. And it's a good enough quick shine where I can put in maybe five minutes of direct effort onto that shoe and um, I can see the ceiling fan. I can see my reflection. It's not glass, but it's toward glass. And it's enough to take a really nice picture to list on eBay. So uh, the last thing I might do is repair the laces and uh, replace them completely. So I have purchased Toucan laces on Amazon. I have purchased Diffway laces on Amazon. And, and both of those have, have been fine for what I do. Uh, let's see, I guess one other thing I could do occasionally is put sole guard on the bottom of leather soles to protect the sole against water. So again, I was more ambitious about this at the beginning and even ended up having a full page checklist that I would check off with a marker um, of when I had used Renamat or Renovateur or what color of Saphir shoe cream I had used or even whether I had retied the shoelaces in a straight bar format and whether they were new shoelaces. Even thought about putting how much time I actually spent shopping for that pair of shoes and the mileage. Nobody cares about any of that stuff. So um, I've kind of ditched that. All right, so that, that's pretty much it when it comes to the, the prepping part. I, I don't spend a ton of time on that, but I try to make the shoes at least look good for the third point, which is photography. And maybe I'll do a full video on this later, but briefly, what I do is I take eight pictures in general of the shoes. I take three shots of each shoe, just one of each side and then the bottom. And then I take two shots of the shoes together from the front and then from the back. There's a ninth picture that I include and that's just simply using my cell phone because it's so much easier to go inside the shoe and to take a picture of the shoe size, the code, where it was made, all of that little data that's usually printed on the inside of the tongue or uh, some other place on the inside of the shoe. So I list those nine photos uh, for my listing. Speaking of the listing, let me head over to the computer now and show you just very briefly how I go about listing a shoe on eBay. This is the listing page that I have created on eBay. This is actually a template and you can create multiple templates for uh, whatever you sell. So this is the very top of it, place to put pictures up here, more specifics about the shoes on down to shipping and then your option to list the item. I won't go through this in great detail, but it all starts with the title. And let's just say I want to sell a pair of Allen Edmonds and then I put in the size next because I figured that's what people would look for um, at the beginning. Allen Edmonds 10C and let's just say we've got McTavish and then I can describe the rest of the shoe. Brown, Capto, uh, actually it would be wingtip in this case, et cetera, et cetera. I have never paid to have my listing in bold title in the search results. I have played with the subtitle. I have not tracked to see whether that actually is effective. I'm guessing it might not be. 
but the custom label is key. So let's say, for example, that this pair of shoes is my 302nd to list. That would go right here under custom label. When I first started doing this, I was selling more than shoes. So I would put SH for shoe, 302, and then the line. But I didn't really want to have that space taken up and have that part be confusing to the potential buyers. So I no longer include the, the product number in the title. I include it here under custom label. So uh, it's always pre-owned for, for what I do. And then I've got just a brief condition description. I hope to buy shoes that are high enough quality so I don't have to be apologizing in this box for problems that the shoes have. But if there are other things, if I've replaced the shoelaces, I can list that here, but I have to be careful not to say they're new shoelaces because then I get barked at by eBay saying, wait, you're telling me these are new. It's like, no, only the shoelaces. So I have to use a little more creative wording. Uh, put my photos in here. Again, I usually have nine but I've got three left that I could use. I put my very best photo at the very top and I can show you what a listing of, in fact, let me do that. Let me just go over to eBay real quickly and jump to my account under selling. And then I'll scroll down to active listings and then show you um, one of my shoes here. So let's click on revise item so you can see what it looks like behind the scenes as well. So similar thing, I've got the Allen Edmonds in all cap, 10 and a half D, Clifton, light brown, derby man's dress shoes, blah, blah, blah. I've got 17 characters left. I could put mirror shine. I could put they're impeccable. I could put Donald Trump has never worn these shoes, whatever. I, there's room there for that type of stuff. And then here are my uh, shoe photos. What I'm doing now is I'm actually doing this shot as my main shot. Um, by the time I finished reshooting all my shoes, then what's going to happen is my entire store will have shoes on this wood background with one shoe facing exactly this direction and we'll all look in sync. But uh, that's going to be a while before I have all that done. Anyway, let me go back to my other listing here and just show you some of the other basics you go through and you just you know put the bl the brand the style the color the stuff you would expect right so there's nothing real special here there was an item description that some people um, put a lot of information and i used to put a lot more information in this box until i realized that people probably weren't coming to read they wanted a, a cool shoe without reading so um, at one point i had actually used the html and I had designed a really cool item description that even drew from a custom image that I had stored elsewhere on another site, beautiful graphics, but um, turns out again, the eBay did not want me to be importing graphics from an external site, and I can get that. So I, I just keep this simple. I don't really worry a whole lot about the item description other than what's here, and I, I rarely change that. It's fairly basic. When I sell shoes, I tend to shoot to do the fixed price. There is also auction style. I use auction style when I have a pair of shoes that I know will have significant market demand. I was fortunate enough to find a pair of Allen of Alden Shell Cordovans that I paid nine dollars for at Goodwill and ended up selling those a week later for two hundred and eighty-four dollars. Uh, by far my best sale. I found a, p a pair of Fifth Avenues, Allen Edmonds, worn maybe once and probably on carpet, sold those for $125. But for the most part, even my Allen Edmonds are going to go for a much lower price. And I could put it on auction, but I got tired of that. I didn't really find that was um, all that beneficial. So I now listed. And if it's a nicer pair, you know, maybe I'll go for 74. Maybe I'll go for 54. And I allow buyers to make offers. So um, let's see, I think I had a pair of 54 up there the other day and somebody offered me 20. And you know, I'm just, nah, I'll just hold on onto them for 
that price. But, but if it's a good offer or if it's at a time where I could use that money, I could pull the trigger on that if I want. So I do allow returns. I do allow international shipments as well. And then the shipping details. I mean, when I first started, I was going through all of this stuff and reinventing the wheel every time I listed, and it was a pain. Now listings take me just, uh, I don't know, three or four minutes. It doesn't take long. But I uh, used a USPS priority mail, two to five days. Used to be just two, but with COVID, it's now expanded. And what I do is I choose a package or thick envelope. So this is not flat rate. It's, an, it's a rate that's based on your dimensions and it's a rate that's based on your weight. The vast majority of my shoes are between two and three pounds, but I do have a digital scale that I got on Amazon and that is really helpful for giving me an exact measurement. So I could go into custom weight, for example, and say these are two pounds and let's say 12 ounces and always make sure to round up so if it's two pounds 11.1 just go ahead and put the 12 if your box is 12 inches and one eighth of an inch just go ahead and put 13 it's always better to round up and be on the safe side or else uh, the post office will charge you for anything that's over so that's really it as far as listing goes. It, it's fairly straightforward and you'll figure it out on your own um, if you're just getting into this. Again, if you've got tips, would love to hear uh, about those from you. Let's move on to the next section, which is how to package the shoes. There are three essential tools that I'll just share with you. One is this roll of plastic bags, and I'll put a picture of this exact model number on Amazon. And it's just very simply a, a a roll of plastic bags like you would get produce uh, to put produce in in the grocery store. And what I do is I put each shoe into one of these plastic bags. And I take it by the heel and I put it heel first with the heel up into the top corner. Fairly simple like that. And then just pull the bag underneath the shoe around where the ball of the foot would be. Twist it around a couple of times. Tape it and this is now much closer to being waterproof. I do that with the other shoe, and once that's done, I take both shoes and put them into a USPS envelope. And this one happens to be an E14 envelope, which you can get for free. And it just gives another layer of protection and actually makes it fairly easy now for the shoes to fit into a shoe box for, from the US Postal Service which is 15 inches long and then eight by six for the other dimensions. So it fits in there nicely. And what I do is I make sure I, I label the numbers. So for example, shoe number 302, I put on the very end of the box and that's how I go looking for that shoe once I've sold it. On the broad side of the box, exactly where I'm gonna put the label, I'll also put 302 and I might put A.E. Allen Edmonds and McTavish or whatever the shoe happens to be. So that just gives me a little more assurance that I've grabbed the right pair of shoes to ship to that customer. So anyway, that, that's packaging. Um, I use a tape dispenser. I'll put that picture on top of um, the video as well so you can see what that's like. So fairly straightforward. When it comes to the shipping, that, that one's pretty easy too. I just print the labels off on a regular printer and I don't have a fancy one that's with the sticker stuff. I just print it off, cut it up with a pair of scissors, tape it on the side of the box, take it to the post office. Now, once I get to the post office, which is for me, thankfully, only a couple of blocks away, what I like to do is take a picture of the package, the box of shoes on the counter with the mailboxes behind it. And I will then send that picture to the seller or just to the buyer so they know that their pair of shoes is now on the way. Um, and I do that because I'm really fast about shipping. I, I've got everything already packaged so I can literally get a box to the post office uh, sometimes within minutes of, of when they pay. So that's kind of cool and it gives me positive reviews and, and good feedback. 
One of the things that I might do though, in addition to sending that photo to the buyer, is to include more information in the message that I send to them in the email, such as sending them information about the wonderful Alan Edmund Enthusiast Facebook page that, that I'm a member of, and that anybody who's a shoe enthusiast should be a part of such a wonderful group uh, created by moderator Preston Soto. So including that, and then links to YouTube channels have been, have been helpful for me in terms of learning how to uh, refinish shoes and shine shoes and, and whatnot. So that's it in a nutshell. That's, those are the six steps that I use to, and, and they're fairly intuitive in, in terms of selling shoes on eBay. Again, I've been doing this less than a year. I don't make a ton of money. I've probably made two or three thousand dollars in the ten months, so it's not bad. Um, some t I, I sold, I think, five shoes in the last couple of days, and made two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars, maybe. But the week prior to that, I had sold zero shoes, and now as I'm going about and taking a look at the inventory that's out there, I'm not seeing a whole lot um, that's available at this point. So who knows? Maybe it'll pick up, but. It's a numbers game, you know, just a matter of being there at the thrift stores to get the shoes, the good ones, as they're put out there. And then, you know, a numbers game in terms of whatever the demand is. You can't expect to make a ton of money because, I mean, even the Allen Edmonds, you know, website is clearing out $425 shoes for, you know, $149. So you can't expect to, to sell a used pair of shoes for 200 most likely. So, you know, if you take that into account and, and uh, moderate your expectations, then, you know, still likely to be a cool experience. Plus, I have built up my personal shoe collection because if I come across a really nice pair in my size, I'll keep them. I mean, why not? Or I'll list them and I'll list them a little bit higher or maybe even a little more than a little bit higher. And if someone pays it, fine, I'll part with them. If not, my shoes. So that's an added perk. I, I probably got 10 pairs of Allen Edmonds for myself here in the last year. And uh, that's pretty cool. I'm looking out for the Aldens. I hope to get my hands on some Grinsons from the UK. Maybe I'll run across a John Lobb at some point. Who knows? All right, here's a quick tour of eight thrift stores that I visited on January 13th, 2021 in the Fort Worth, Texas area starting with this one on Barry Avenue. They've got a few racks of shoes in the very back corner, and occasionally I get some good ones. This is not one of those pair, or these two black ones, or these two brown ones. Uh, the one on the right are Johnson & Murphy's. They have potential, but do I really want to put that much work into selling a shoe on eBay that might sell for, who knows, 13 bucks if that, no. So on we go to the next Goodwill store. And I rarely go to this one. This one is on Hewlin Avenue. They've got a, just a couple racks of shoes as well. Some old worn wingtips by Florsheim. And this pair of GBXs, which I passed on, but that one actually did have some potential, although there's some discoloration around the toes. This pair of Sebagos I passed on with some uh, pure polish leather creamer. These could have been brought back to life and looked absolutely wonderful. But um, with a loafer, you also will have a higher risk of having them return because they might not fit. I haven't had that happen yet, but I can see that possibility existing. Onward to Haltom Thrift on Alta Mesa. And they've got two racks that are closest to me in this picture for browns, for blacks. Sometimes I get lucky there. One time I picked up a pair of Allen Edmund Normandy boots for like $25, pretty much brand new. Worn maybe once on carpet if that. They were great. I still have them in my personal collection. But on this day, no such luck. Further down the street to the Goodwill on Alta Mesa. Shoe section in the back. Not much going on. Uh, there's a pair of Bostonians that uh, looked all right, but there was a little wear on them. And, and nobody's really searching for new Bostonians. Um, a lot of the shoes were like this. They're just not uh, worth looking at. 
went to the McCart Thrift Center on McCart Avenue, and they've got a very large section for their shoes, but not a whole lot of shoes on the racks these days. And that tends to be the case uh, right now across the board. This, not worth getting, not worth getting. That intrigued me, but I've got a pair very similar to that, just in a smaller size, that I thought would have sold by, you know, a shoe aficionado who wanted to get one for their kids. Um, but there they sit in my inventory list. I moved on to this one in Bembrook, and occasionally they have some decent shoes there, but not on this day. Old Johnson & Murphy's that would have taken some work uh, to get back into shape, so I moved on to Camp Bowie. And it doesn't look like much, two rows, but here's where I found my pair of Aldens that I sold for $284. It's where I found four pair of size 11 Allen and Edmonds one day, uh, probably all from the same person, uh, probably passed away and, and they got donated. But in this day, not a whole lot there. So I moved on to the final location, which was this Goodwill on Cherry Lane in White Settlement. And they've just got two rows of shoes. Sometimes I get lucky here. This day, I did not. But what's interesting about um, this location, as well as the Camp Bowie location, is that they're relatively close to a more affluent neighborhood. And so some of the better quality shoes get passed on to those local stores. So they're always good places to hit up. Anyway, best of luck in your shoe selling endeavors. And thank you for watching and keep upgrading.